crazy time for all of us but for someone like me uh, a single working full-time mom uh, it was even more so of course uh, with everybody at home my daughter also at home but in a way it gave me a pause to work on my creative writing pursuits so that was my fortress of solitude if you will so uh, you know working with my father on his autobiography Burma to Bangalore I think that was the catalyst. I think once that got done, that gave me the impetus to go ahead and complete my long pending novel, If Then Else, which has been in work in progress for like 15, 16 years. So got that out of the door. A lot of the poems that I've written over the years, I've sent that out to anthologies, got those published. And once all those big tickets were out of the way, um, then that actually gave me the freedom and space to think about things like YouTube, blogging. Um, I dusted off my old blog between the tropics, started a new YouTube channel called Writing with Sandhya, and both of those, you know, took me off, uh, took off very well. Right now, I'm also doing a podcast. Uh, the Book Bakers presents uh, Army Adventures with Sandhya on the Mensa podcast channel. So all of these has kept me exceedingly uh, well engaged. And it is this combination of collaborative as well as solitude that suited me perfectly, you know, an introverted writer. Another thing in my uh, workspace was also, you know, contributing to the industry, the technical communications industry that I belong to. Um, I'm particularly interested in leadership development. So as part of the technical writers of India, a group we started the manage the docs MTD group and I'm a board member there and uh, we really worked on a lot of things over there so all of this was exceedingly uh, you know invigorating and also made an impact on people so it, that was delightful to see <laughs>
So mental health for me is being emotionally resilient. Um, again, particularly in these times of the pandemic, right? We're being thrown into a space which we have never experienced before. So having the ability to cope with the stress and the demands of the ordinary as well as extraordinary times that we are in, I would define that as mental health. generally calm so I think that helps me in keeping a balance and I really believe in balance like work-life balance and balance between all the different aspects in life uh, but I'm also a Torian so if I get pushed to the limit uh, I can really explode so I'm working on that uh, trying to be a little bit more open and expressive so that it doesn't all come out in a rush uh, at times right so that's one thing. And of course, uh, like everyone else, um, you know, I like to keep in touch with the friends, um, close to my family, of course. And uh, that really, uh, you know, keeps me sane. I enjoy that. And I've been doing a lot more of that in the pandemic, you know, reaching out to people whom I haven't reached out for years. I also pace myself and I keep taking breaks. So that helps me, you know, stay in it for the long haul. Uh, you know, my friends and family particularly always say they're amazed that I can just take these, you know, short 15 minute naps or just, you know, need some space for myself, but, you know, come back totally refreshed. So I think these are the ways in which uh, I take care of my mental health. publishing my first book as I mentioned after 15 to 16 years uh, so one thing that I've realized is your journey your writing journey is your own do not compare you know that's an absolutely no win game uh, I'm very happy with all my little accomplishments and I'm content with that but once you start comparing yourself to others that can lead to a lot of frustrations and unnecessary uh, kind of comparisons and of course, we know that writing takes, especially novels, takes a, needs a great deal of discipline and structure and persistence. Um, and uh, the shorter forms of writing are probably easier. So it's challenging for those who have to, you know, juggle between full-time work and managing a household and children. And for those, I would say that know your boundaries, you know, set up a boundary for writing as well and, you know, preserve that uh, zealously. But... Um, also know your own priorities in life and your objectives and don't let anybody bulldoze you into uh, in any way in either direction right so i think that will help you stay focused and stay the course and you know touch the finish line <laughs> shuffle so keep shuffling uh, the different things and I don't work on everything all the time so once I had the big novels out of the way uh, I'm not working on anything big uh, apart from edits on my novel if then else which is going to come out so I worked on my YouTube channel and uh, once that was underway I went and started looking at my blogs started setting some of my poems out 
and then took a complete break for a couple of months for my daughter's summer holidays because that was important and uh, with uh, all the pandemic easing out you know we could travel and we both love to do that so we kept time for that as well um, I haven't started working on a novel yet so for that I might need more focus maybe I'll have to cut back on some of the other things also avoid FOMO you know the fear of missing out there are so many opportunities now in um, in the world and with the digital media <coughs> so uh, we always feel um, and see about having to miss out on something but there will always be opportunities right so don't push yourself into a corner just enjoy what you do If you have a headache, you pop a crocin. If you're a little more sick, you go and visit your doctor, the general physician. So why is mental health any different, right? Um, mental health impacts all of us um, in every way and impacts everybody around us. So in fact, we should pay more attention to that. Uh, it could be to a greater or lesser degree and accordingly, we should you know, take action to maintain that. And everyone has something to feel sad about, angry about, frustrated about, and particularly so, as I mentioned, during the pandemic, uh, I talked about emotional resilience. I mean, that has become a real challenge for everybody. And staying cooped up has brought out a lot of the frustrations of years, perhaps, and it has just, you know, kind of come out. Uh, if it's difficult to manage by oneself, just go to an expert who can help you. I mean, that seems like a no-brainer to me. Why should there be any stigma in that? Okay, uh, let me share a couple of things here, probably things I've not shared on a public platform earlier. Um, I have been through depression, um, you know, and I've come out of it with the help of some meds and counseling. It's just not a big deal. I think things that I had to go through in life and it really helped me prepare and uh, repair and set myself up for, you know, the happiness and success to come. And it should be that easy for everybody right um, if you need help you should just be uh, go out and get it and everyone should feel comfortable seeking that out when they need it so even for children um, they can't all be measured on the same scale some have mental challenges learning difficulties and they should not be judged but they should be provided with sufficient uh, assistance and I just wish parents would do that I know and help them get the right interventions early in life so that it helps them, you know, set up to succeed for later in life. I really would love to see uh, India moving towards a more mentally healthy society. Firstly, I'm very grateful uh, for having the honor to be a judge for this esteemed uh, competition. So thank you very much, uh, the AMP and Vikrant Utekar and Suhail Mathur from the Bookmakers for uh, giving me this opportunity. I'm really excited and looking forward to it. 
uh, for the entries, I think my first pass would be that of a reader. Uh, if something strikes me, it could be an uh, you know interesting plot, a unique character, evocative language, um, something as a reader strikes me, then I would take it, uh, shortlist that and take it for a second pass where we look at all the finer things such as language, style, structure, tone, in those um, sort of the discipline or the rigor of writing. So I think that is what that I would look out for as a judge.